In this video, we're going to learn another technique for integration where we make a change of variables using some of our trig functions. This technique is useful if the integrand contains an expression that looks like it came from the Pythagorean theorem. Something that might be radical a squared minus u squared or radical u squared minus a squared, or something that has u squared plus a squared, possibly under a radical. We make a trig substitution using the following strategy. We're going to draw and label the sides of a right triangle. Now, we've been doing this before. When we were working with the industry functions, we would draw a right triangle. And we want to continue this. I highly encourage you to, whenever possible, make use of this right triangle. I know that there are formulas in the textbook, and you may be tempted to just try to memorize those formulas. And that may be successful for you in the short term. But those formulas might be easy to remember, but they'll also be easy to forget. If you get into the habit of drawing this right triangle and labeling it and using the information from the right triangle, you never have to memorize any of those formulas. And then we'll use one of the trig ratios looking at the information on the right triangle. And we'll rewrite the integral in terms of theta. It really, it's going to be in terms of some trig functions uh, of theta. So here's an example. We'd like to evaluate the indefinite integral of x over radical 1 plus x squared dx. So I'm going to start by drawing a triangle. Now, I like to put my theta here in the lower left-hand corner. I just think it's easier to work with in that way. Then I look at my uh, terms that are in the integrand. I have radical 1 plus x squared. If I'm using a, the Pythagorean theorem, the way that I get a plus under the radical sign is if that is the length of the hypotenuse. So I know that the 1 plus x squared has to be the hypotenuse because of the plus underneath. And then I'd have to say, well, you know, that is really got to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So a would have to be 1 and b would have to be x. Now I've got my right triangle. What trig ratios do I see? Well, one that I like is tangent of theta is x over 1, or just tangent of theta is x. That really gives me a substitution for x right there. And from that, once I have x equals some trig ratio, I can find dx. dx will be secant squared theta d theta. Now, I see that in my uh, integrand, I have radical 1 plus x squared. What trig ratio can I use to replace the radical 1 plus x squared? Well, cosine of theta is 1 over radical 1 plus x squared. I could use that directly, but it's going to be more convenient for us to use secant of theta being the reciprocal. Secant, remember, is uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, so it's radical 1 plus x squared. So now I should have enough information here to be able to rewrite the integral in terms of theta. So I replaced x with tangent theta. I replaced radical 1 plus x squared plus c with secant theta. And then I replaced dx with secant squared theta d theta. So I can simplify that. And I see that in my integrand now, I have the derivative of secant theta. So the antiderivative will just be secant theta plus a constant c. And now I just have to rewrite this in terms of the original variable, x. So secant of theta is radical 1 plus x squared. So this is going to be radical 1 plus x squared plus c. 
Now, in this particular example, I could have worked out the same integral just by using a u substitution. And you might want to try that to verify that you get the same answer. We cannot use a u substitution directly with our second example, which is the integral from 1 to 2 of dx over x times radical 5 minus x squared. But what I can do is start by drawing a triangle. Now, under the radical sign, I have a minus sign. So this is not going to be the hypotenuse. This is going to be one of the legs. The radical 5 minus x squared will, will be the length of one of the legs of this triangle. And uh, sometimes you, it's not clear which leg you should use. But generally, the most complicated expression uh, I think of as maybe being uh, the opposite. Um, and so now, how would I get um, what would be the hypotenuse then? See, this would have to be radical c squared minus uh, b squared. Let's just put it that way. So the hypotenuse squared is 5. So the hypotenuse would be radical 5. And then the other leg is going to be x. So that way, if I take this leg squared, I'll get x squared. If I take this squared, I'll get uh, 5 minus x squared. When I add those together, I get 5, which is the same as taking radical 5 and squaring it. So now that I've got the, the right triangle labeled, well, what useful uh, trig ratios could I have? I certainly want to have x in terms of some trig ratio. So I can see that cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so that would be easy to solve. I could say that x would be radical 5 cosine theta. That's the substitution I'd like to use. Now, dx then would be negative radical 5 sine theta d theta. And then I'd like to have some sort of expression for uh, the radical 5 minus x squared. Now, mind you, I could just put x into that uh, expression and work it out. But I think it's a lot easier if I refer back to the triangle and see if there's some way I can express uh, this radical 5 minus x squared in terms of one of our trig functions. And sure enough, sine of theta would be uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So that'd be radical 5 minus x squared over radical 5, which means that radical 5 minus x squared would be radical 5 sine theta. Now, generally, uh, with definite integrals, uh, there are some exceptions. And we have some of those examples uh, in our video here. But usually, uh, we just want to find the antiderivative in terms of x and then perform the evaluation as a last step. So I'm going to write the indefinite integral in terms of theta. So I'll replace dx with negative radical 5 sine theta d theta. I'll go ahead and replace x with radical 5 cosine theta. And I'll replace radical 5 minus x squared with radical 5 sine theta. So this simplifies quite a bit. I'll have uh, the radical 5 sine theta will divide out. And I'll have a negative 1 over radical 5, which I'll take outside the integral. And what's left over is just 1 over cosine theta, which is secant theta. And the antiderivative for secant theta is natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus some constant of integration. And so I remember this is a definite integral, so I shouldn't forget that, first of all, I want to write that in terms of x. And then I'm going to go ahead and perform the evaluation now. So I'm going to keep my x bounds and then go ahead and work that out. 
and through the substitution. I've got a rather complicated expression. Sometimes you can use properties of logs to uh, condense these, uh, but in this case, I don't see uh, any value in it. Let's look at another example. It's uh, another definite integral, integral from zero to one. We have dt over the quantity t squared plus one squared. So in my triangle, I know that the t squared plus one, because it's a plus, is going to be on the hypotenuse. I have radical t squared plus one on the hypotenuse, and that means that legs should be t and one. So what trig ratios would I find useful? Well, tangent of theta would be t over one, or just t. So that would be a good substitution to make. dt then would be secant squared theta d theta. And then what about this t squared plus one quantity squared? Well, secant theta is radical t squared plus one. So I'd have to square that and then square it again to get t squared plus one squared. So t squared plus one squared would actually be secant to the power of four. So let's make a change in the bounds too. Here it happens to be one of those rare cases where it's fairly easy. Uh, when t equals zero, uh, theta is going to be zero as well. And then uh, we know that tangent of pi over four is one. So when t equals one, theta is going to be pi over four. So writing this in terms of theta, I have my new bounds, zero to pi over four. dt is replaced with secant squared theta, d theta, and then uh, secant to the power of four uh, replaces t squared plus one, all squared. And so now I get d theta over secant squared theta can't do much with that because the secant squared theta is in the denominator, but secant of theta is one over cosine theta. So that's just going to be cosine squared theta d theta. And we just learned that we can use a double angle formula to rewrite that as uh, one half, one plus cosine of two theta d theta. So let's go ahead and find the antiderivative and perform the evaluation. Uh, and so when I put in pi over four, I get pi over four plus one half because sine of pi over two is one. And then when I put in zero, uh, I don't get any contribution because it's sine of zero is also zero. So just writing that as a single fraction and cleaning it up, I get pi over two over eight. All right, let's look at uh, a case where it, I already have some trig functions, but it turns out in order to evaluate this, I'm going to have to first make a change of variables, then make a trig substitution. So I'm going to let u equal sine of t. So it's what is squared is going to be my uh, change of variables. Then du is cosine of t dt, which is on the outside. And I can change my bounds here. Again, this is one of those lucky cases where changing the bounds is not hard. Now, you may have been tempted to say, oh, I'll just use, look, uh, the, the derivative of the outside is, der is the derivative of the inside. And it's like, or what I see on the outside is the derivative of the inside, but it's not the case because the derivative of one plus sine squared t is going to be two sine of t cosine of t, which is, I don't have that outside the radical. So that u substitution would not be valid, but our original u substitution is valid. And after I make the replacement, now I see I have a one plus u squared under the radical which makes me want to draw a triangle and put one plus u squared on the hypotenuse, radical one plus u squared. u and one 
on my legs, a useful trig ratio would be tangent of theta opposite over adjacent, which means tangent of theta equals u. And so du would be secant squared theta d theta. And secant of theta is the radical 1 plus u squared. So I can make my substitution. Well, again, this might be a, a case where I can change my bounds as well. When uh, u equals 0, then theta will be 0. And when u equals 1, theta equals pi over 4. That's what we just saw in the previous example. So now my new bounds are from 0 to pi over 4. In the uh, numerator, I have secant squared theta d theta. That's what my du is. And the radical 1 plus u squared, we saw that's secant theta. And so after I simplify, I'm just left with secant theta. And I know it's antiderivative natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So the only thing that's left is the evaluation, which will give me natural log of radical 2 plus 1. In our last example, we have to do a little bit of algebra before we can make a change of substitution. And then finally, make a trig substitution. So the first thing we're going to do is complete the square. I see I have x squared minus 6x plus 3. I really want to have something that looks like a u squared plus or minus a squared, right? That's what we'd like to have under the radical sign. So by completing the square, uh, I'm going to have to take the negative 6 divided by 2 and then square it. I'll have to add in 9 and then subtract out 9. So these first three terms make x minus 3 quantity squared. The second two would give me a minus 6. So I haven't done any calculus yet. I just did some algebra. Complete the square under the radical sign. Now it might be helpful to make a change of variables. Let x minus 3 equal u. Remember when we're doing this, we look at the thing that's squared. The thing that is squared is going to be our new variable, in this case, u. And then du equals dx. So now in terms of u, I have du over radical u squared minus 6. Now, since I have a minus under the radical, I know that this is going to be one of the legs of our right triangle. The hypotenuse, then, is going to have to be u. And the other leg has to be radical 6. So when I take radical 6 squared plus the square of u squared minus, of radical u squared minus 6, that gives me uh, u squared minus 6 plus 6. And uh, that would give me the square of the hypotenuse. So that all works out. What useful uh, trig ratios would I have? It looks like a secant of theta would help me get my definition for u. It's u over radical 6. So then solving for u, u would be radical 6 times secant theta. And then du would be radical 6 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Um, to get something to replace radical u squared minus 6, I'm going to use tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is radical u squared minus 6 over radical 6. That's just opposite over adjacent. And that means that uh, radical u squared minus 6 is radical 6 tangent theta. So let's go ahead and make our substitutions then to write the integral in terms of theta du gets placed, replaced with radical 6, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Radical u squared minus 6 gets replaced with radical 6, tangent theta. And that can simplify down to just radical secant theta, d theta. We know that antiderivative is the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus some constant of integration. I put a hat on here because this is not going to be my final constant of integration. We'll see that in a minute. 
because now I want to write this back in terms of my original variable. So I'm going to have to first go back to write it in terms of u. So I'll replace secant theta with radical uh, with u over radical 6. I'll replace tangent theta with radical u squared minus 6 over radical 6. I'm going to combine the two terms, the two fractions in the absolute value sign as a single fraction. And then I'm going to use a property of logs to write that quotient as the difference of two logs. And the reason why I did that is because then natural log of radical 6 is just a constant. My other constant c hat is a constant. So I'm going to combine those together and let that be the constant c. And so now I have only to replace u with x minus 3. And I'll replace the u squared minus 6 with the original x squared minus 6 plus 3 to get my final uh, antiderivative.